My name is Lawrence Eaves. I'm a physicist working in the University of Nottingham. And recently I've been enjoying a collaboration with uh, Andre Geim and Kostya Novoslov, two Nobel Prize winners from the University of Manchester. And we're working together on graphene transistors. Now graphene is a single atomic layer uh, of carbon atoms and uh, it is commonly made by exfoliating graphite. What I've done is I've taken an ordinary lead pencil. What's inside the pencil, of course, is not lead, it's graphite, uh, written on a piece of paper. And then by sticking some tape on that, and then peeling the tape off, uh, I've been able to make a mark on the tape. And then by folding the tape over repeatedly like this and separating them, I can thin and thin and thin down uh, that layer of graphite on the tape until eventually I'll have a very thin layer, which you can barely see, like this one here. And that one will almost certainly contain a few layers of single atomic graphite or graphene single crystal, this hexagonal sheet, and it's that which has got these remarkable electronic properties that we exploit in our transistors. Let me put it on the paper, and fold it over, and that's it. And that's what we're going to put in the time capsule. The electronic properties of graphene were first discovered in 2004 but my, by my friends and colleagues, Kostya Novoslov and Andre Geim, and I was delighted when they invited me a couple of years ago to, to join them on their project of making transistors, and tunnel transistors, and quantum tunneling is one of the things that I've been working on here in Nottingham for the last 30 years or so. So it's been a great voyage of discovery trying to understand the, the properties of graphene in these transistors and how the transistors work, and uh, trying to put together the quantum mechanics, which allows us to make a model to exactly work out how the current depends on the voltage we apply to the device between the electrodes and, with the gate, and through the gate electrode. We're very optimistic that the graphene will have properties that will make better transistors than we've been able to achieve through silicon. So this is very exciting. Now, where the field goes in 20 years, I don't know. Maybe we'll have graphene integrated circuits or something like that. Maybe computers will be more powerful. But I think it's very dangerous to go much beyond that time frame. 100 years, who would have believed we'd be filming me today 100 years ago with a digital camera? And uh, this would have been impossible for people to contemplate. So 100 years, I'm not very good at predicting. I just hope that there'll be plenty of scientists around making people rational, making them think clearly, being critical of each other. That's the important thing we need, that science has a bigger role, politicians understand it, society understands it better. That's what I'd like to see 100 years. The joy of finding something new and making, realizing you understood something that perhaps nobody's understood before, that's still a draw. So although there are lots of us working and each scientist is only making a tiny contribution to the world effort, it still doesn't diminish the uh, pleasure one gets from finding out something new, from publishing it in a good journal and seeing a paper out there and being able to talk about it in lectures and conferences and so on. That still applies even though we are in a sense a drop in the ocean. What was my proudest moment as a scientist? Well, I suppose there are many of them. First of all, getting your very first paper published in a journal. Secondly, giving your first talk at a conference. Then there's a bit of a gap, I suppose. I think I was very proud when my former postdoc, Andre Geim, uh, won a Nobel Prize a few years ago for his work on uh, graphene with Kostin Novoslov and uh, their other colleagues in Manchester. And then my most recent proud moment is when Andre and Kostya invited me to join them to work on graphene transistors. So I'm going to take, take th this piece of paper and put it in the time capsule. Well, it looks like an ideal Victorian object. It looks as if it's come from some Jules Verne film, Journey to the Centre of the Earth or something that I was what, must have been watching when I was a 12 or 13-year-old boy back in the 60s. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. It's not very high-tech looking, but fun.